Hi, today we're going to be talking about Altair Inspire's print 3D feature, binder centering. And for those unfamiliar, it's the post process of binder jetting, where binder jetting is an additive manufacturing process that distributes adhesive through a bed of powdered material and builds up a part layer by layer. This process doesn't require support like other methods, but does use setters when post processing because the green part that comes out of binder jetting still needs to be fired to completely solidify them. And that firing process is referred to as binder centering. And this is where Altair Inspire's Print 3D can help us simulate that. When we first open up the software, we're going to navigate to the Print 3D ribbon and open our model. Once the model has been imported, we can change it to the colors we like to help us differentiate between parts. I'm going to rotate mine so we can view it a little bit easier. Then we need to go up to the SLM icon, click on this little arrow, and switch to binder centering. Now we can see that the ribbon changed, and this icon allows us to select which solid is our part. Then we get this pop-up with a couple options we can change, like material, temperature, density, and I'm going to keep it at the aluminum alloy. Temperature and density look good to me, so I'm going to confirm. We can go up to the same icon and select the smaller icon, which lets us define our setter, and in this case is the blue solid. We also get a mini pop-up where we can relate the setter to any other part, and in this case we only have one other part, so we go ahead and confirm. Now we can set the bounding box of the oven with X, Y, and Z. Once we hit create, It'll make an environment that we can see our part and setter within. And we can move on to orient. When we click on orientation, we see a mini ribbon that provides us the option to orient with maximum or minimum height or a specific surface touching the base plate. Next to those is base surface, which allows us to see what's making contact with the plate. And if need be, we can turn on other surfaces to act as though they're touching the plate too. Next up, we have our SAG preview, which acts as a way to quickly check where a part is susceptible to sagging. Visually, without contours on, we can already see the cylindrical area this part will deform. But, if we turn on some of the options we have to our right hand side, we can get a clearer understanding of this analysis. We have the option of turning on the original outline, turning on those contours to show the lows and highs of deformation, a combination of using those two tools, and of course animating it. Then lastly on this row, we have our check stability icon. For parts that look a little precarious in their orientation, we can use this to verify that they won't fall over. The green flag indicates that it is good to go, so we can move on. This next icon is for setters, and in this case, we already have a setter, but if we did not, we could go ahead and select this underside surface and it would auto generate one for us. To see an example of the tool being used, I'm clicking on the camera icon, which is consistent through all Altair software. Now that we've gone through all the setup tools, let's go over to analyze. We're going to hit the play button on analyze and we're going to get a binder center analysis pop up. Here we get two analysis types, shrinkage and compensation. Here we can also define tolerances, scale factor, whether we want to include gravity, temperature calculations, which are formatted in a table or a graph. These are completely editable. You can click up into the table and change the value there. Or if you prefer, you can also drag the points on the graph.
We also have additional advanced settings, which you can view here. And everything looks good, so I'm going to send it to run. Now that the run has started, I'm going to skip ahead and come back to you when I have the results. Now that they're complete, we can see that our status has a green check mark and our icon has a green flag. Clicking on the green flag shows us the shrinkage and displacement, and we can play the animation associated with it. On the right hand side, we have our result options, which we can toggle through. Displacement, centered deviation, relative density, temperature, volume change. All of these will change in correspondence to those results. And of course we can rotate around the part to make it easier for us to analyze it. Seeing that our part was heavily affected by shrinkage, we can go back into the analysis and now change it to compensate, giving us access to maximum iterations and deviation tolerance. With every iteration, this analysis increases the part a bit, moving it closer and closer to the true size we want the part to be after sintering. And once again, I'll come back to you when the run is complete. Now that we have our green flag, we're going to go and click on it and we're going to get that same results pop up from before. I'm going to change the view so we can see it easier. And now notice under iterations, I only have two results, even though I picked five. In this case, it only required two to find the result we wanted, so it stopped. So I'm going to play both animations. That way we can try to capture the difference between those two. In this first iteration, we can see that it did grow a little bit, but still ended up shrinking smaller than the original part because we can see that outline. And now with the second iteration, we can see that it does shrink, but it shrinks perfectly to the size that we want. And visually, we're going to do that one more time from a different angle. I'm going to change it to our first run. Here we can see the outline. Now we can see the compensated size of the part. It shrinks down. It's beyond what we want. So we go to the second run. It grows again to the compensated part. But now when it shrinks, it's the perfect size that we need. Since this is exactly what we're looking for, we're going to confirm. And now we can go up to green part where we can export it as an STL. And with that, happy simulating and thank you for your time.